bad starting values is a common reason for convergence problems in maximum likelihood estimates and in any other statistical estimates that use numerical optimization. Let's take a look at an example and how printing out the starting values might help us to troubleshoot a problematic model. The idea of maximum likelihood estimation is that you are trying to find a population that maximizes the likelihood of the observations. So if we have, for example, these are three values, two, three, and four, and we try to find a normal distribution that maximizes the likelihood of these three values, we start with some initial guess. We might have this a normal distribution of mean of zero and standard deviation of one. We move it a, a little bit left, then we move it a little bit right, and we look at how does the, uh, the, the likelihood of these observations change. And we can see here that if we move this uh, distribution to the right, then the observations move to the left and they become more likely because the probability density is, is uh, greater, on, greater here than it is on the right hand side. So we move that distribution to the right a bit and we find that the maximum likelihood estimate of the mean is at, at three and then the standard deviation is somewhere a bit less than one. All right, so what is the starting value problem? The bad starting value problem comes if uh, we, we, our observations are actually here and uh, see they are 22, 23 and 24 in this case and we, we start with a mean of equal to zero. So uh, if we move this distribution uh, to the left a bit and to the right a bit, then the likelihood of these three observations is still zero, exactly zero within the computational precision. These uh, estimates are so unlikely from, from that normal distribution, or these observations are so likely from that normal distribution that the computer rounds these likelihoods to zero. And, and this is uh, one instances, instance of the starting value problem. The computer does not know how to proceed because regardless of how we adjust the normal distribution, the likelihood of all these observations will be zero. Let's take a look at in with a practical example on how, what does this actually look like on a computer and how do we solve the problem. I'm using this example from, from UCLA. So they have this, uh, nine, uh, six indicators, y1 to y6, and we are feeding, a confirm, uh, feeding an exploratory factor analysis using confirmatory factor analysis. So uh, they, they explain the procedure here, and I'm using Stata, so the model is here. So we have our two factors. We have F1, that is loaded on which all the indicators except y5 load on, and then we have F2 on which all the indicators except Y2 load on. So this is, a, they are called a reference indicators or, or something like that. So this is how you do an EFA using uh, the, the CFA. And uh, we, we run that. We uh, have all the variables are standardized. So the variances of all the indicators are once. And we have the factor variances set to once. So this is comparable with what exploratory factor analysis would do. And we know that uh, in an exploratory factor analysis, if it's unrotated, the factor loadings will be between plus one and minus one. And in a, ro a rotated solution like this, they are roughly in that ballpark. They can exceed a uh, plus one, they can be smaller than minus one, but typically they tend to be between the uh, one and minus one. So, so we run it. Convergence not achieved. So, so Stata tells us that this does not work. And uh, how do we then know that where to look at? Well, well one symptom of non-identification is, or, or a symptom of a computational problem related to a specific parameter is missing standard error. We can see that uh, the variance of, of the indicator six is missing, or its standard error of the variance is missing. The reason here is that Stata does not convert to Haywood cases. You can get it to convert to Haywood cases with Haywood option, but it wouldn't help here. Another thing uh, that we notice is that the standard errors for the factor loadings of this indicator Y6 are missing. And uh, they are, the factor loadings are also pretty large. And this variance is very close to zero. How do we then know what is the problem? Well, we can start by printing out the starting values. 
And uh, we do that using the no estimate options in Stata. And then Stata prints us the starting values. So these are the initial guesses that Stata tried. We can see already that there are a couple of problems here. First, the variance, the error variance of y6 is about 13. And that shouldn't be possible because the variance of, of y6 is 1 because the, data are because the data are standardized. And error variance cannot exceed the variance of the indicator. Another thing is that we can see that these loadings of, of the indicator are uh, plus 13 and minus 13. So that looks very weird given that the loadings are normally in the plus 1, minus 1 ballpark. So uh, how do we fix this problem? First of all, we need to document the problem into our, our, our do file. And this applies to any other statistical software. So when uh, you do some changes to your model based on diagnostics, always summarize the diagnostics. And this is the way I like to do it. So I'll just copy paste the data output the relevant lines. And then I, I say that, okay, so these lines caused me to rethink the starting values in this case. Then we set some reasonable estimates. So the factor loadings are, we know based on theory that indicator Y6 should not load highly on the first factor. So we set the factor loading to zero. We know based on theory that it should load reasonably on the second factor. So we set the factor loading to 0.1. And then uh, we don't actually need to set the error variance because this is sufficient to get the model to work. So uh, whenever you have a, a model that doesn't work, printing out the starting values can be a useful thing to do. And if you see some extreme or really unreasonable starting values, then give some more reasonable estimates based on prior empirical research, based on your own intuition, based on theory. But just it doesn't really matter where those numbers come from as long as they are more reasonable than the ones that they are, the statistical software tries to use. If the model is identified and it converges, then uh, the actual final estimates should not depend on the starting values. So adjusting the starting values can be done pretty freely and it is only to make the model to converge. It will not affect the actual estimates after convergence. Another thing that we can do is, is to estimate another model that, that works and use those other model estimates as starting values. So what I'm doing here is uh, estimating another model where I use uh, uh, indicator Y6 as the reference or a reference indicator for the first factor. And then I estimate that model. So instead of using indicator 5 as the reference factor, I use reference indicator. I use indicator 6, which was the problematic as reference indicator. That works. And then I use estimates from this model as starting values for the, for the other model, which was problematic. That also works. When I use this uh, as an assignment for the students on my course, I tell them to use an exploratory factor analysis and then take the values from that exploratory factor analysis, use those as starting values. It works as well. But this is a bit more elegant. So running the EFA, you would have to type in uh, the, the values or use some, some more exotic data syntax to get the estimates directly from the EFA results without typing them. Now let's take a look at the bigger picture. Here is the uh, list of all different ways that I can think of that an estimation technique might fail. And here are some of the solutions. If you take a look at the different problems that I've identified, looking at starting values, fixing starting values, can be used to address all kinds of optimization, calculation, computer in, in, uh, implementation, and iteration issues. Starting values, uh, just inspecting the starting values, will not address model identification issues. Some of the empirical checks for identification use starting values as a tool, but simply printing out the starting values will not help you identify these other problems. But because starting values can identify many or be a cause of these four classes of problems, it's generally a good practice to always include printing out the starting values early on in your workflow for dealing with convergence problems.